So Anthony Yard has arrived in Chelyabinsk, Russia, ahead of his fight on Saturday night against WBO World Light Heavyweight Champion Sergey Kovalev. Now, there had been some doubt in the minds of many about whether this fight would actually take place, including my own mind, because of the fact that this fight has been pushed back twice already. And in the lead up to this particular date, there was no press conferences, which compared to world title fights in the UK or the US or Germany, etc., is highly unusual. But maybe they just do things differently in Russia. Maybe Sergei Kovalev is such a big name in his hometown or maybe even his home region that the event organizers felt there was no need to bring Anthony Yard over to do any promotional work because Kovalev's name alone will sell the event. It will sell the tickets and get people to tune in on television. So perhaps that's what the case is. But as I say, compared to world title fights in the UK and America, it's highly unusual. But anyway, Yard and Tunde have landed in the country. But as you can see from the title of this video, their bags haven't landed with them. Now, I'm somebody who's traveled a lot, been to lots of different countries all around the world, and my bags have been delayed once or twice. It is pretty, it's fairly unusual, but it does happen. I'm sure some of you out there have had experiences where you've been on connecting, uh, you know, flight, where you've been on journeys that have connecting flights and you've, your bags have ended up being delayed. Ha it happens. But both Anthony Yard and Tunde Ajayi in this interview said that they raised an eyebrow when their bags didn't arrive, which to me suggests that they're entertaining the possibility that there's some shenanigans going on here. You know, that there might be airline staff or airport staff who are fans of the local hero Kovalev and therefore want to help out in making Anthony Yard feel unsettled and uneasy during fight week, you know? Now, I don't know whether that's actually the case, but it certainly shows that Anthony Yard and, and Tunde are cognizant of that possibility. So they're kind of a little bit on edge. And it's okay to be on edge to a certain degree, but you don't want to let that overwhelm you because that can negatively affect your performance. But, you know, anyone who's been following the sport of boxing for any length of time or who's been involved in it as well, you all know that antics do go on <laughs> and you'll be surprised at the kind of people who can be involved in these antics. It goes far beyond just uh, boxing promoters and the boxing teams and the commissions sometimes. Again, I'm not saying there's antics going on here, but Yard and Tunde are certainly open to that possibility. Now, if these are shenanigans, okay, which, which have been perpetrated by fans of Kovalev or maybe team members of Kovalev, friends, who knows? If that is the case, then the antics won't stop here. They'll continue throughout fight week. Yeah, they're not going to make his bags go missing and then just leave it at that. No, they're going to continue trying to mess him around throughout fight week. Unsettle him as much as possible until he gets in the ring on Saturday. And if that happens, it shows that Kovalev and his team are taking Yard a lot more seriously than a lot of people would have expected if they're willing to go to these lengths to try and unsettle the man. Because if they didn't think he was any good, they probably wouldn't bother, you know? So anyway, uh, I'll let you guys discuss that. Tell me what you think. I know some of you are just going to be dismissing it out of hand. What a load of nonsense. There's no way there's any antics going on. Well, maybe you're right. <laughs> okay, but being that I'm a veteran, you know, boxing fan, and I do have some inside knowledge of the sport, having boxed myself and having known many pros and boxing industry people over the years, I can tell you that antics do take place in the run-up to fights. And as I say, they involve some surprising people who might even be in security, law enforcement, etc. Uh, it, it goes on. Anyway, as far as the fight itself, uh, it's an intriguing one because for me personally, and this is not, this might not be your view, but this is my personal view. Okay, I don't know why people get upset when I give my own personal perspective. This is my personal perspective, how I see things in my mind. From my personal perspective, there's a lot of questions on both sides. I've got a lot of questions of Kovalev and I've got a lot of questions of Anthony Yard. With Kovalev, the questions are more to do with where his mind is at at this stage of his career, 
because he's been involved in all kind of outside the ring incidents. And it makes me think about whether he's got this drinking problem that some people are talking about. He's obviously 36 years of age. How motivated can he be against somebody like Anthony Yard? And on top of all that, I do believe that Anthony Yard will be the most athletically gifted, fast, the, the fastest in terms of hand speed and hardest punching fighter that Sergey Kovalev has ever fought as a professional. That is going to raise a lot of eyebrows, okay? But that's my personal assessment. That's my perspective. I think Yard hits harder, is more athletically gifted, and has faster hands than anyone Kovalev's ever fought before as a pro. And I've got questions about Yard too. But as experienced as Kovalev is, if you get in there with a guy who just is way faster and hits way harder than anything you're used to, sometimes you can go into panic mode. <laughs> you know, it happens. I mean, I remember, I know Mike Tyson, as we all know, was a tremendous talent. But when he fought Trevor Burbick, Burbick had fought at a much higher level than Mike Tyson. Burbick had answered far more questions than Mike Tyson when they fought. But Burbick had never been hit that hard before in his career, and he'd never been hit so fast. <laughs> so when he got in there again, and Burbick was confident against Mike Tyson. He was one of the few uh, Tyson opponents when Tyson was in his prime who went in there with a tremendous amount of confidence. Burbick was very confident, probably too confident, probably complacent. And he got hit so fast and so hard, it was like a shock to his system. Could that happen to Sergei Kovalev against Anthony Yard? I know most of you are going to say no, but I'll get onto that in a minute. But as I say, there are questions for me about Kovalev in terms of his commitment to the sport, whether he's distracted by outside the ring stuff, he's still got his court case hanging over his head, uh, whether he's still hungry at 36, this young guy coming in with power and speed and athleticism, will he be able to overwhelm him? You know, there are questions there. Now, as far as Anthony Yard, I've got questions about him too, because although he's got all this athleticism and speed and punching power, he's never fought anybody with a pulse. His team have gone above and beyond to keep this guy away from his domestic rivals, to keep this guy away from anybody who can punch. And we mean, what's that all about? <laughs> Why have they done that? Are they just being overprotective? Or are they trying to hide certain flaws that they know Anthony Yard has got? Can Anthony Yard take a punch? Does he have stamina? Does he have heart? Can he hold it together mentally? These are legitimate questions because this is not a man who had an extensive amateur background, who traveled all over the world and fought top fighters. No, he had like 11 or 12 amateur fights at a fairly low level. That's it. And as a pro, as I say, he ain't fought nobody with a pulse. So this guy really is an enigma. He's an unknown quantity. He's a tremendous athletic specimen, yes. But in boxing, you need more than just being an, a, a tremendous athletic specimen. Your chin will get tested at some stage. Your heart will get tested. Your stamina will get tested. Your boxing brain will get tested. Your defense will get tested. He's got this Mayweather-esque, you know, slick defense, but he's never had a world-class offense really test that and see how watertight it is. Well, that's going to happen on Saturday night against Sergey Kovalev. You know, it may be a case of who lands first. Because I certainly believe that Anthony Yard has got the power to knock Sergey Kovalev out. I certainly believe he's got the hand speed to trouble him if he applies it in the right way. I mean, we saw Isaac Chalemba give Kovalev trouble throughout that fight, but particularly early with the jab at long range. He was rocking Kovalev's head back. We saw something similar in the, in the Alida Alvarez fight, where even prior to the round where Kovalev got knocked out, he was having his head rocked back and he was getting caught consistently by Alvarez's jab. You know, so, so many questions I've got in this fight. I said, I had a conversation with Thibaut, who's a French guy, <laughs> boxing fan who I talk about on his channel from time to time. And in his conversation, I said to him, and this was a couple of years ago now, at the start of Anthony Yard's career or close to the start of his career. I said to him, if Anthony Yard has a good chin and good stamina, if he, if he proves that he's got those two attributes, 
I think he could beat Sergei Kovalev and Adonis Stevenson within the next 12 months. That's what I said to him a couple years ago. That's how highly I rate Anthony Yard's, not just his athletic ability, but the fact that he's got such little experience, but he's been able to uh, cultivate the skills and the technique that he has after so little time in boxing, to me, that shows that this guy is not your ordinary prospect, okay? But again, there's still a hell of a lot of boxes to tick with him. Maybe he's got no chin. <laughs> you know, maybe the first time he gets hit with a solid jab from Kovalev, he goes down. I mean, we just don't know. That's why I'm not going into this fight making assumptions, yeah? Um, the majority of people who I've seen making predictions for this fight are making predictions based on assumptions or they're making predictions based upon what they want to happen. You see, once you start getting into the realm of wishful thinking, then you're going to blind yourself to certain factors which an objective person would have taken into consideration. So those who want Kovalev to beat Anthony Yard because they don't like Tunde or they don't like Lions in a camp or the fact that this guy avoided his domestic rivals or whatever the case may be, those people are thinking, ah, oh, he's a hype job. That's it. There's no way he can take Kovalev's power. There's no way that his defense can hold up to Kovalev's offense. There's no way he'll be able to hold it together psychologically. There's no way with all those muscles that he's going to have any stamina. There's just no way. They, they don't want at the yard to be able to tick those boxes. And therefore they're convincing themselves that he can't. They don't really have any concrete proof that he can't tick those boxes, but they just want that to be the case. And so to some degree, they're basing their predictions on that. But the same is uh, the case for the other side of the fence. You've got a lot of people who are pro yard, who they don't know the answers to the questions either but yet they're acting as though Yard has already ticked those boxes or that they, they know for a fact that Yard can take a punch or that he does have stamina, does have heart, will hold it together mentally. How do they know? Well, there is no proof. <laughs> it's just blind faith. So I don't want to make a prediction based on blind faith. I don't want to make a prediction based upon too many assumptions. You know, I mean, we all make assumptions to some extent, but there are so many assumptions you'd have to make, at least in my mind, that I'd have to make in my mind to predict this fight. I just can't do it. <laughs> I'm just going to sit back and enjoy hopefully a good contest and, you know, see where it goes. Uh, if Anthony Yard manages to pull this off, not only does he deserve an enormous amount of credit for traveling to Sergey Kovalev's, I mean, it's, look, it's not like he wanted to take the fight in Kovalev's backyard. He had to take the fight in Kovalev's backyard. He's a mandatory challenger. Kovalev wasn't going to go uh, to the UK unless there was an enormous amount of money on the table. And I don't think Frank Warren would have uh, outbid Kovalev's people by the looks of it. So, you know, he's going to Russia by necessity, but be that as it may, he's still going to Russia. He still didn't have to take any world title fight right now. He has turned down world title fights in the past. Uh, but if he manages to beat Kovalev, he deserves a massive amount of respect. And Tunde will have been validated not just in terms of his ability as a trainer, because he's literally built Anthony Yard from scratch, but he would have also been validated in terms of his ability as a manager, because that's what has been under question. Uh, not just his you know, ability as a trainer, but his ability as a manager because of the fact that he's moved Anthony Yard in such an unusual way. It, you know, Instead of the traditional route, which Frank Warren normally likes to move fighters, British, Commonwealth, European, etc. Anthony Yard has just fought a host of mainly anonymous journeymen. <laughs> and then he's jumping from fighting Travis Reeves to fighting Kovalev. That will be a masterstroke in retrospect if Anthony Yard pulls this off. And I'm sure Tundi Ajayi will never stop talking about it for the rest of his life. <laughs> so we'll see. Um, I've always said that I think Tunde Ajayi is a good trainer. I've always said that his ability as a manager, the jury's out on that. As far as I'm concerned, I, we have to see what happens with Anthony Yard because this is the first time that Tunde has been in this position with a fighter who he's built from scratch, challenging for a world title. 
So we'll find out whether Tunde is the real deal here in terms of his management ability. Um, but yeah, if they pull it off, kudos, man. Hats off. <laughs> they would have done a tremendous job. Tunde Ajayi was told by Frank Warren, he said this on camera numerous occasions, he was told by Frank Warren prior to the first Alida Alvarez fight that Sergey Kovalev was ready for the taking. And he was present at the Kovalev Alvarez fight. I think Yard was too, the first fight. They watched that. Uh, I think Tunde might have been in the rematch too. I can't remember now. But he's been studying Kovalev for a while, Tunde. Clearly with a view to putting Yard in there with him. And maybe they, maybe he feels like the time is right. Timing is everything. That's something Tunde likes to say over and over again. Timing is everything. Uh, we'll see whether they got their timing right. You know, uh, from a psychological point of view, as I said before, I like what Anthony Yard and Tunde do from a psychological point of view in terms of putting themselves in a bubble. Anthony Yard has talked about this in recent interviews that he puts himself in this bubble and he doesn't let anything penetrate the bubble. He doesn't let negativity penetrate it. He doesn't let the doubts of the media and the fans penetrate his bubble. He just keeps himself and his team within this little bubble and they take that on the road with him. So wherever they go, they feel comfortable because they're always in their bubble. But will Sergey Kovalev be able to burst this bubble with punches in the ring? See, that's, that, that's where we'll find out how tough that bubble is. Because within your bubble... So it's good from a psychological point of view to keep yourself in the bubble. You're not supposed to focus on what the other guy's doing and worry about his experience and all this kind of stuff. You're supposed to focus on you and your ability and what you can do. That's good from Anthony Yard. But at the same time, within that bubble, has Yard been sufficiently tested in the gym? Have they brought in tough enough sparring? Have they stepped him up incrementally well enough in professional fights to prepare him for any hardship that he might encounter against Kovalev in the ring. We won't know. <laughs> so it's intriguing. It's fascinating. The young guy against the veteran. Uh, will it be a change in the guard or will it be Andy Yard having his bubble burst in spectacular fashion in Chelly against Russia? Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. How do you see this fight going down? Are, some, uh, are there some of you who are still unsure about whether the fight will take place? You know what I mean? If there is sufficient antics during fight week, you never know, maybe Yard and uh, Tunde will say, you know what, we're off. <laughs> we're out of here. We, we ain't fighting. They're trying to sabotage our fight week, you know? I mean, that's, uh, it would be unusual, but not beyond the realms of possibility, you know? Um, yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comments anyway. It's happening, I'm out. Join me on Patreon. I upload a minimum of two podcasts every single week covering a wide variety of controversial topics as well as live stream Q&A sessions. Take a look on screen right now at some of the podcasts I've produced so far. For just $3 a month, the equivalent of about £2 a month, you get access to all my new podcasts and my entire back catalogue of past podcasts, including my popular Confessions of a Nightclub Bouncer series. You can listen on your computer or on your smartphone or tablet by downloading the Patreon app from the Google Play Store or the App Store for free. The Patreon app also allows you to download each podcast in MP3. For less than the price of a cup of coffee, you get access to dozens of hours of exclusive content. It's easy to sign up, there's no contract, and you can cancel at any time. So come and join our community of free and critical thinkers by signing up with me here on Patreon today.